forever, never to be released, and often by cruel and controlling family members. But in fact, when we do think about mental health and when we look more closely at the records of families and patients in uh, psychiatric hospitals in the past, we find a very different story emerging. And in the present, we need to go much further to understand how our current treatments of mental health and the experiences of those who are suffering from uh, problems to do with mental health uh, can be understood in the light of the history of mental health in this country. Given that around one in five people suffers from a mental health problem in their lifetime, that means that we're surrounded by people in our community who have some form of a uh, health problem in this regard. And mental health is now treated in the community rather than inside large institutions. So we need to think about ways in which we incorporate those understandings of community mental health care and also how we see those in the light of, of our histories of mental health. If you come to the Winter Lecture Series and listen to a number of us talking about mental health, you will hear a range of perspectives, including uh, from me some discussion around how the history of mental health is actually rather different from the, the kind of common perception of, of the treatment of mental health in the past. I will talk quite a lot about how institutions were places where people came and went, where families visited, and institutions with which families interacted and were quite involved. So I think we can expect to have uh, quite a different set of ideas emerging from this winter lecture series around mental health. I'm Nicola Stark here, I'm a senior lecturer in the psychology department. We've uh, recently, or well, actually three or four years ago, completed a large-scale project looking at the um, how common traumatic brain injury is in New Zealand and also what the longer-term effects of traumatic brain injury are. Until we did our research, most studies overseas and in New Zealand were focused on people who'd been admitted to hospital. Um, they tended to focus on people with more severe injuries and we didn't know much about what happened to people who had quite mild injuries. The types of things like concussion and bangs on the heads that people get from falls and fairly minor car crashes. So we wanted to know more about the effects of minor head injury and also how frequent it was in here. I think, um, probably not only in this country, I think worldwide, one of the biggest challenges is that traumatic brain injury or head injury is actually unseen. So um, probably one of the biggest issues is getting people to understand and realise that a brain injury or a concussion can have long-term effects. And a person you meet in the street, if their speech is slurred, it may not be because they're drunk, it could actually be because they'd had a brain injury. Um, I think one of the um, one of our study participants actually said said to us that they'd been advised to go back to work with a bandage around their head so that their colleagues would remember that they'd had a brain injury and not assume that this person was fit and well and ready to go back to work. I think we need to I think people need to be more aware of the possible consequences of head injury. So even a mild head injury can actually cause some quite long-term effects. So about 20% of people, even after a mild injury, suffer quite, um, can have ongoing symptoms, headaches, um, depression, memory loss, concentration and fatigue problems. And so even after a relatively mild bump on the head, there can be ongoing issues. And these issues are quite often under-recognised and maybe not linked to um, the original injury. And I think probably one of the most important things, particularly in relation to sport, if you get a concussion, you need to rest until it's fully resolved because usually a second concussion on top of the first will actually increase symptoms quite dramatically. I think in this country, well, I think um, everywhere, basically improved uh, recognition of the effects of mild TBI or the effects of traumatic brain injury and head injury generally, not only from the person who suffers it, but also from the community at large and also um, providing better information so that people know what the consequences of brain injury are. Our research so far has shown that um, boys and men are more um, at risk of TBI. The highest rate of brain injury is actually in those under the age of 34, so someone who has a brain injury can basically live the rest of their lives with ongoing symptoms. Um, I think we also need to be aware that about 30% of brain injuries were actually in children, and it used to be thought that children 
recovered better from brain injuries in adults. But more recently it's been shown that um, a brain injury during childhood, um, its effects can be much longer lasting than those in adulthood because it can alter how the brain normally grows. Um, one of the big consequences of brain injury is actually mental illness, particularly depression and anxiety, and particularly in people who suffered from depression and anxiety prior to their injuries. So I think our study, and actually most of the research to date shows that um, if you had anxiety or depression prior to a brain injury, or if you know someone who had anxiety and depression prior to a brain injury, the chances of the brain injury triggering anxiety and depression are really quite high. And so targeting the right people for treatment post-injury and actually ensuring they get early treatment is actually quite useful. Hopefully the lecture will be interesting to people from all sorts of different backgrounds. Um, traumatic brain injury and head injury is something that affects everyone and I think most people in New Zealand will know someone who has been concussed at one time or another. Hopefully I'll tell you a bit about how common it is, uh, what the causes are and also the consequences and how we can help people with brain injury. We look forward to seeing as many of you who can come to our winter lecture series focused on mental health and head injuries at the Gallagher uh, Academy of Performing Arts at the University of Waikato, August the 14th from 6 till 7pm and there will be an opportunity for questions so lots of really interesting discussion will emerge. Please come.